Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. Last two videos I've explained you about the residential status of an SSE. There are different provisions given by the Income Tax Act regarding the determination of residential status because tax liability depends on the residential status. Now in this video, the next topic, incidence of tax. That means the scope of income we have to find out because a person may earn the income from India or abroad. So this section 5 of the Income Tax Act 1961 has given the provisions regarding the scope of income. That means which income should be included and which income should be excluded from the total income of the SSE. On the total income, the tax liability depends. So these provisions are very, very important in examination. They will ask you which are income, which incomes are called the Indian income, which incomes are called the foreign income. One point you remember already in the residential state of I explained you that if a person is ordinarily resident in India, then he has to pay the tax on the global income. If he earns the income in India or from foreign country, he has to pay the tax in India because his residential state is ordinary resident. For a non-resident person, only Indian income is taxable, foreign income is not taxable. But all these provisions I have explained in the last video. In this video, uh, incidence of tax payment means the burden of tax payment. Ultimately, the burden of tax payment depends on this incidence of tax. It denotes the tax liability of a person. So ultimately, the tax liability depends on residential status and incidence of tax. According to Section 5, Section 5 of the Income Tax Act 1961, the concept of income and the place of earning the income, whether income is in India or in a foreign country, are the deciding factors for determining the tax liability. So two things are there, what, whether it is an income or not. Then secondly, where the income has been earned, whether in India or in a foreign country. These are the deciding factors to determine the tax liability. And section 5 deals with the scope of total income. That means which income should be included and which income should be excluded in finding the total income of the SSC. The tax liability of a person depends on the residential status of the person during the previous year. So these two items are the residential status and scope of the total income will determine the tax liability. The provisions are same for the last assessment year 22-23 and current assessment year 23-24. So in, uh, on the board it will be written as assessment year 22-23. Just ignore it. The provisions are same. Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. Last two videos I have explained you about the residential status of a person. Now in this video, I'm going to explain you about the incidence of tax. That means the scope of income, which income to be included and which income to be excluded in computing the total income of a person. Remember, every income is not taxable. Some incomes are not to be included. That means we have to find out the scope of income. So in this topic, incidence of tax, I'm going to explain you. In examination, you will get a theory question regarding, explain the provisions regarding incidence of tax. These provisions are given under section 5 of the Income Tax Act 1961. So before proceeding further, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, incidence of tax. Incidence of tax means the burden of tax payment, the scope of total income. That is called incidence of tax. According to Section 5 of the Income Tax Act 1961, the concept of income and place of earning the income, that is important. First of all, the income, what do you mean by income and where the income is generated? And the place of earning the income is important whether the income is earned in India or outside India is the deciding factor in order to calculate the tax liability. So in order to calculate the tax liability, we have to find out what is income 
we must know the meaning of the term income where the income is earned whether income is earned in india or income is earned outside india and uh, this will this will be the deciding factor in order to apply the tax liability section 5 of the income tax act 1961 deals with the scope of total income that is which income to be included and which income to be excluded in computing the total income during the previous year relevant to the current assessment year now the tax liability depends on residential status in the previous videos i have explained you the tax liability always depends on the residential status of the person during the previous year so so many provisions are there how to determine the residential status of an individual huf company firm etc already we have discussed in the past uh, two videos so if you have not watched, go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject income tax for the assessment year 22-23. Watch the videos on residential status. That is very important. Now, depends on the residential status, we have to find out which income is taxable and which income is not taxable. The incomes can be classified into two categories, that is Indian income and foreign income. So a person should be clear regarding the meaning of Indian income and meaning of foreign income. So first we discuss what is Indian income. Income which is earned, received or deemed to be received in India are treated as Indian income. Three words you do. Income which is earned in India, income which is received in India and income which is deemed to be received in India. These in incomes are called Indian incomes. Now example, an individual either an Indian citizen or a foreign national receives income from you should not think that only Indians have to pay the tax foreigners are not liable to pay tax it's not like that even foreigners are also liable to pay income tax here so if any person who is Indian citizen or a foreign national if they are having the incomes from these sources then the persons whether Indian citizen or foreign national has to pay the tax it's an Indian income it's an Indian income so what are the Indian incomes first salary for the services rendered in India any salary received by rendering the service either by Indian citizen or a foreign national if a foreign national comes to India and work in a company he is earning the income in India and receiving the income in India he has to pay the tax even he is a foreign national because the salary which he receives is by rendering the services in India. Secondly, rent received from the property situated in India. If a property is situated in India and it is given on rent, a rent is received. This rent may be received by an Indian national or by a foreigner. For example, a foreigner comes and purchases some property and he has let out the property, he has earned some rent. So even if he is a foreign national, he has to pay the tax because the property is situated in India. Thirdly, uh, income from business or profession which is established in India. Any income from business or profession, whether the business is owned by an Indian citizen or by a foreign national. Because the business is established or a profession is established in India, the income of that business or profession will be Indian income. Next, fourth, income from any asset held in India. Apart from house property, a person may own some asset and on that asset he is earning the income. Then also it is an Indian income, whether the asset is owned by Indian national or foreign national. Then capital gain on transfer of any capital asset in India. If any gain arises on sale of capital asset, that is also taxable in India as Indian income. Whether the asset is sold by Indian origin or by a foreign national. Because the capital asset was in India and sold in India, it's an Indian income. Next one, any other income for is the source of income in India. Income tax always has played very carefully in making the provisions. That means it will not specifically give the cases that these are only Indian incomes. Last case, it is open head. Any income which has a source in India, that will be treated as Indian income. So whether the income is earned by Indian national or a foreign national. <clears throat> then foreign income. 
so far we have discussed about the meaning of the term in income simply you have to remember income which is earned received or deemed to be received in india whether the income is re earned received by a, an indian national or a foreign national foreign income if the source of income a receipt of income are in foreign country then income received by a person shall be treated as foreign income if a person has a source of income outside india and received the income outside india example mr x is a indian national he is an indian citizen he is working in us so there he is rendering the services and getting the salary so income is earned in us and received in us itself then that income is called foreign income simply income earned received accrued outside india is a foreign income <clears throat> now tax liability for the ssc depends based on residential status we have already discussed in the last video also the tax liability depends on the residential status of the person accordingly tax liability will be calculated so all the residential status we have decided in three forms that is ordinarily resident not ordinarily resident and non resident in each case what is the tax liability i am going to explain ordinary resident <coughs> if a person's residential status is ordinarily resident he has to pay the tax on all incomes whether indian income or foreign income even global income also he has to pay the tax in india suppose mr x we have seen mr x residential status his status is ordinary resident now income tax act says mr x you have to pay the tax on every income whether it is an indian income or whether it is a foreign income immaterial you have to pay the tax on global income the income earned throughout the world you have to pay the tax in india because your residential status is ordinarily resident person resident and ordinarily resident person second <clears throat> not ordinary resident if a person's residential status is not ordinary resident person during the current or previous year relevant to the current assessment year his status is non not ordinary resident in that case income tax act is only indian income is taxable foreign income is not taxable there is an exception to this rule the rule is indian income is taxable foreign income is not taxable this is the rule but for this rule there is an exception given for not ordinary resident person if a person who is not ordinarily resident he is having a business outside india but that business is controlled from india then the income earned from that business is taxable in india even if it is a foreign income for this person example mr x his residential status is not ordinary resident person during the current previous year Mr X is having a business in Hong Kong now here from India he is controlling and managing the business all the instructions are given from India but the business is being done in Hong Kong the income is generated in Hong Kong but it is controlled from India so the income earned there is a foreign income but income tax act says Mr X you have to pay the tax even on that business of Hong Kong why because it's a business which is controlled from india and your residential status is not ordinary resident other than business if any other foreign income is there that foreign income is not taxed that is for not ordinary resident now lastly <clears throat> non resident person non resident person only and only indian income is taxable foreign income is completely exempted even if he is having a business outside india which is controlled from india that income is also not taxable in india because his status is non resident simply only only indian income is taxable the foreign income is completely exempted for non resident person these are the provisions now if a per foreign income is not taxed in the past for any reason the same cannot be included in the total income of the ssc during the current year income tax act has given the provision suppose the foreign income is not taxed in the past for any reason 
but current year it was found then the past income the for the past foreign income is not taxed during the current assessment year for any type of assessees whether it's a, he is a uh, ordinary resident or not ordinary resident or non resident for everybody the rule is same past foreign income if it is not taxed earlier cannot be taxed in the current assessment year then receipt of remittance remittance means transferring the money from one place to another place example mr x is working in us he is rendering the services he getting the salary he has received the salary in us after receiving the salary he has brought the money to india or sent the money to india either through bank or through a person or any other means mr x has sent the money from us to india it is called remittance so when a person is remitted the money the money which is received in india through remittance that is not an income that is not taxable because already it is earned there. mr x he has earned suppose 5 lakh rupees in us later on through a bank he has transferred the money to his father's name from us to india the father has received the 5 lakh rupees remitted by his son income tax act says it is not an income of the father it is a remittance of money from us to india it is not taxable in the hands of the father recipient right so in this video i have explained you about the topic of incidence of tax which income should be included which income should be excluded so ultimately it depends on the types of income indian income and foreign income right and finally the tax liability depends on the residential status for ordinary resident every income indian <coughs> or foreign <coughs> completely taxed for not ordinary resident only indian income is taxable foreign income is exempted except one case where he is having a business outside india but controlled from india then the income of that business is taxable in india that is the exception in not ordinary resident for non resident completely exempted foreign income is completely exempted only indian income is taxed that's all so this is the end of this topic introduction so introductory part completed now from the next video onwards we have to start the problems and we have to complete all the heads of income income from salary income from house property profits and gains of business and profession capital gain and income from other sources see this income tax subject little bit tough subject one of the comment i got from one of my viewer and he says so it's very boring chapter sir again listening the same thing only theory we are feeling sleepy it's completely boring no baba it is boring if you are feeling it bore ultimately depend on your mindset if you want to learn the subject if you want the knowledge you must have the patience of uh, listening and watching <coughs> i am explaining each and every point why the students scored less marks in income tax is the same reason they will not understand the theory they don't have the patience to understand to watch the theory so whatever i am saying it is not new you can find in any textbook the same provisions are there but reading yourself will take 6 hours while watching the video it will take 15 20 minutes the same output in 15 minutes what we can understand you cannot be able to understand by watching by reading yourself in the textbook for 6 hours that is one of the i mean saying that's why this listening of lecture is very 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 important and without understanding without watching this theory videos you will find stuck yourself in the problems all the problems are based on this only so this is the criticality of this <coughs> introduction part so inshallah i will take up the problems in the next video so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel among your groups among your friends so, so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge give your comments on these videos and subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and by the super thanks which is given below my video inshallah we will start the next topic in the next video